Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. A tragedy in the Huron River. A teenager jumps off a bridge and drowns, prompting a new warning from the Ann Arbor Fire Department. The boy who died, just a sophomore in high school. He was with a larger group of teens yesterday. They were jumping into the Huron River from a train trestle, Amtrak trains used for crossing, just west of ben Bandemere Park. As we were putting together this story for this evening, we put Sky 4 up to give you a different vantage point where all this happened. And we were surprised to see more kids jumping from that bridge. Pamela Osborne live with more on the story. Pam. As soon as we saw what was happening, Devin, we did contact police so that they could get those kids out of harm's way. No one is supposed to be going up there or jumping down into that water, but that certainly is what was taking place. And now officials issuing new warnings tonight after a high school sophomore died. The Huron River may look tranquil, but it's not. The tragedy that played out here yesterday speaks to the dangers of the water below. Officials say students from Skyline and Pioneer High Schools were jumping from the Amtrak Bridge right near Brandemere Park when one of them, Alex Walker, got into trouble. People nearby heard the commotion and rushed to help. They pulled Alex from the river. Medics performed CPR and transported into the hospital where he later died. Less than 24 hours after that tragedy, we saw even more teens attempting to do the very same thing. We called police who came out to remind them of the dangers. Even the strongest swimmers, they say, can be swept under. Alex Walker was a sophomore at Pioneer High School. He played football and ran track. The district sent a letter home saying his mom wanted others to know how he passed. Ann Arbor Fire Chief Mike Kennedy is trying to keep anyone else from jumping in too, saying the current, debris, and trees can pose dangers that most people might not make it out from. And police and fire officials again warning people tonight to stay off of those bridges and out of the water. They see even if you're kayaking, your best bet is to put on a life, life vest because the water can be that unpredictable. Meanwhile, the school district tonight offering its condolences to the family, also saying they're offering additional support to students right now and giving parents some talking points by age group on how do you speak to your students and your children about this tragedy. Reporting live here tonight in Ann Arbor and Pamela Osborne, Local 4. Tough conversations. All right, Pamela. Other news at this hour. A man is found dead in a submerged car in the St. Clair River. Sky 4 over the scene on Military Street up in Port Huron. People on board a Customs and Border Protection plane noticed the car in the river this morning. They called police. The dive team was able to pull the man out, but he was already dead. Investigators think the car had been in the water for days. In fact, they're asking anyone with outdoor cameras in the area to give them a call. A massive search is set to start to find the remains of East Point teenager Zion Foster. Police agencies across Metro Detroit are launching Operation Justice for Zion. She was last seen in January with her cousin Jalen Brazier. He told police he st she stopped breathing while they were smoking marijuana and he threw her body in a dumpster. Brazier is serving prison time for lying to police. An emotional Sierra Milton spoke today about her daughter. Listen. She just turned 17 in November. I was supposed to be doing graduation pictures and prom and helping her to get her first ID and helping her to get her license. And it's just so much to miss out on. Yeah, heartbreaking. Investigators will now focus on a landfill in Lenox Township where they believe Foster could be buried. They say the search could take about seven or eight weeks with about 40 workers on the ground each day. Two people are arrested in a wild case of road rage in Sterling Heights. Body cam video shows officers taking both men into custody Wednesday night. Police say it began when an SUV started cutting off other vehicles and someone in the SUV gave the middle finger to the driver of a minivan. Those two vehicles crashed into each other at Van Dyke and 17 Mile Road. The minivan stopped, the SUV stopped behind it, and someone in the SUV fired shots at the minivan, blowing out the back window. Both of the men in the SUV are now facing felony charges. It's really nice to have this weather anytime, but we'd love oh, to take it good. through the weekend, too. It's not too early. It's, it's Thursday. We That's right. Definitely. Let's start, start our weekend plans here now. Start Paul. thinking about it now. <laughs>
I'll tell you what, it's just been a fantastic week. We have another one like it coming tomorrow. And here again is that Grand Prix camera shot we have. That's our camera on Belle Isle. You can see the beautiful high thin clouds, a few contrails there. Temperatures are still in the 80s, 82 in Detroit, 83 in Ann Arbor, 85 in Lapeer, 78 right now in Monroe. That's because the air coming off the water has kept you a little cooler today. But you can see here's those high thin clouds. All the action has been up to the north here. Nothing that's bothered us. And as we explained yesterday, these storms are much farther north than they were yesterday. Remember yesterday they were down in here, so we had more of that cloud cover that spilled off, but not today. We just had plenty of sunshine and that will continue through the evening hours till the sunset, of course, and we'll have uh, temps dropping into the 60s by 10 o'clock or so. All right, we will talk more about this weekend rain chance. We got to time that out for you. We'll do that in a few minutes, guys. Okay. Well, thank you. And the beautiful weather has people heading to state, metro, as well as county parks. But those parks are running into a snag when it comes to hiring seasonal staff. We saw this last year and it doesn't seem to be getting any better this year. Megan Woods joins us live from Metro Beach. So Megan, if these parks can't hire enough people, visitors will really start to see a difference here. Exactly. So uh, these parks are going to have to make difficult decisions like shortening their hours or closing on certain days. That's why they're doing everything they can to get more people to apply. Now it looks like it's not going to be feasible to be fully open seven days a week to the level we want. Red Oaks Water Park in Oakland County typically opens the first week of June. Staffing shortages is pushing that back to late June. It'll probably be uh, a few days a week at this water park, and a few days at our sister water water park, which is Waterford Oaks, um, and, and sharing staff and doing staggered days to be able to open and then hopefully adding more staff as we move through the summer. Between both water parks, they need 75 lifeguards who go through a free training. Right now, they only have half of that. We are throwing a lot of resources at it. We've increased pay for lifeguards. We actually have over $800 in bonuses for, for new lifeguards. Oakland County Parks have also hosted multiple job fairs, but say not enough people are applying. Metro Parks are facing the same challenges. Lifeguard hiring has been a challenge, so visitors may experience uh, hours that are different in our pools than they would see in an average summer. And while parks are doing everything they can, we do ask visitors, uh, remind them that we are having those staffing uh, issues, so uh, we appreciate the grace that visitors offer. She says they're also offering hiring bonuses for a look at their opening positions and uh, Oakland County Parks. So we'll have that on clickondetroit.com. Live from Metro Beach, I'm Megan Woods, Local 4. Yeah, $800 is a lot of money. So hopefully that uh, entices some people to apply for those jobs. Megan, we appreciate it. For most drivers, it's instinctual. Sirens or flashing lights means you move over. You give space to whatever emergency vehicle you see. It's not just a courtesy, it's actually the law. And it's not just designed to protect police, fire, and EMS. It's also designed to protect tow truck operators. Sean Lay has information on a crackdown aimed at reminding everyone about one of the most important rules of the road. Well, let me show you. You've got a disabled vehicle here on the side of the highway, and then you have this MDOT van. Look at the van. There are flashing lights on it. When there are flashing lights on a vehicle like that or any other vehicle, it's the law that you have to slow down and move over. It's called Michigan's move over law. But take a look. Many drivers are not following this law and the results can be deadly. It just doesn't seem like anybody's really caring to move over anymore. It is the law, Michigan's move over law and lives are on the line every day. 2020, I was actually struck I was only struck by the mirror of the vehicle, but I was struck. Ryan Monahan operates a tow truck. My arm was in a sling for uh, six weeks. It was, uh, it, it wasn't pleasant at all. Not only was he hit by a driver who didn't move over, his coworker was killed that way in 2015. We've seen it happen where police and tow truck drivers and others are at risk. MSP conducting an operation called Guardian Angel yesterday in Metro Detroit, where 44 drivers were stopped for not moving over. I want to be able to go home to my family and I want to see other operators um, and public servants go home to their families as well. You know, they need to put themselves in our shoes for a minute and, you know, think about, you know, our lives and, you know, us being able to get home to our families and our children and stuff. So they need to just slow down and, you know, nobody's life is, is worth getting home five minutes early. 
great point there by Ryan police. They concentrated on drivers on 94, 96 and here at 696. Here's what they found in their operation. They made almost 200 stops citing 44 drivers for failing to move over 44. 99 drivers cited for speeding. The top speed was 107 miles an hour right past MSP there and also eight drivers cited for texting. So it's the distractions, but you hear Ryan say simply slow down, give them some room so everyone can get home safely when their job is done. We're live tonight. Sean Lay, local four. Back 107 will get your attention. All right, Sean. A former president at the University of Michigan who was fired over a relationship with a subordinate has apologized to the school's governing board. The Detroit News reports it's part of a settlement between the university and Mark Schlissel. The deal guarantees him a faculty job, retiree health insurance and other benefits. That's according to the Detroit News. But it first starts with a one year leave and $463,000. The Board of Regents fired Schlissel in January. In a letter last month to the Board of Regents, he acknowledged poor judgment, saying, quote, the relationship was entirely consensual, was never physical, and did not involve the inappropriate spending of university resources. But in a time when we've been trying to strengthen the bonds of trust at the university, it is particularly important that campus leaders avoid even an appearance of impropriety. End quote.